purpose of this film is to show the means and methods of preventing and fighting fires in the metal, mineral, and allied industries. It stresses the need of workmen to know what to do in case of fire, to recognize various types of extinguishers, the kind of fires each type can be applied to, and how to use them. Controlled fire is one of the most useful tools in our rapidly progressing society of today. But uncontrolled fire is a destructive force that takes many lives and destroys billions in property value each year. In order to control or prevent fires, it will help to understand more about fire itself. Basically, there are three conditions that must exist in order to have fire. Each is represented here by a leg of a triangle. First, there must be something that will burn. This is called fuel. Common types of fuels are wood, gasoline, and oil. Second, there must be air. Actually, it is the oxygen in air that supports combustion. And third, there must be heat. Heat sources include open flames, such as a match, electric arcs, and overheated machinery. All firefighting methods are based on the removal of one or more legs of the fire triangle. For example, pouring water on a fire removes the heat leg. Smothering a fire removes the air leg of the triangle. And closing a valve on a gas line removes the fuel leg of the triangle. To remove any leg of the triangle depends upon knowing the kind of fire being fought. All extinguishers will not work with all fires. For firefighting purposes, fires are separated into three classes. The three types are classified A, B, and C according to the fuel involved. In class A fires, the fuel is a solid combustible material such as wood, rubber, textiles, or paper. In class B fires, the fuel is a flammable liquid, such as gasoline, oil, paint, grease, acetylene, or natural gas. And class C fires involve energized electrical equipment, including switch panels, cables, motors, and generators. Combustible materials are plentiful in underground operations. Common among these are timbering, used for support in access ways, in shafts and raises, and in stopes for flooring, chutes, and cribbing. Also, used and discarded timber, trash, oil or grease accumulation, and spillage are frequently encountered fire hazards. The presence of methane gas is another potential danger in all underground mines. Cables and hoses are dangerous when involved in a mine fire because poisonous fumes can be generated. Sources of heat that have caused underground mine fires include lighted cigarettes, friction produced by mechanized equipment, electrical short circuits, cutting and welding operations, and spontaneous combustion.
Most fires can be brought under control in their incipient stages by locating the source of the fire promptly and by using the proper extinguishing equipment. For Class A, or solid combustible material fires, a cooling effect will remove the heat from the fire, thereby extinguishing the flame. Now here is a water type fire extinguisher. Besides the water, it contains air under high pressure or an expellent gas. When the extinguisher is activated, water is released under pressure. Here are some other water type extinguishers. To activate the grip handle type, a release pin must first be removed before the lever will operate. Another type of extinguisher used for Class A solid combustible fires is the soda acid type. Housed in a lead-lined cylinder, it contains sulfuric acid and bicarbonate of soda dissolved in water. It is activated by turning the unit upside down. The acid mixes with a soda solution, generating carbon dioxide, which provides the necessary pressure. The extinguisher must be stored and carried in an upright position to prevent accidental mixing of the contents. The addition of antifreeze is necessary when water type extinguishers are kept in freezing temperatures. For class B, or flammable liquid fires, dry chemical, foam, or carbon dioxide extinguishers can be used. A dry chemical type consists of a pressurized container filled with fine powdered chemical. The foam type extinguisher contains sodium bicarbonate solution in the main chamber and has an inner container of aluminum sulfate solution. When the extinguisher is inverted, the two solutions mix and generate foam. And once activated, the discharge of foam cannot be interrupted. The foam covers the flame, thereby cutting off the air from the fire. The foam blanket is excellent for extinguishing flammable liquid fires. Fires involving energized electrical equipment are classed as Class C fires. To eliminate electric shock hazards, the extinguishing agent used must not be a conductor of electricity. Dry chemical type extinguishers are most suitable for this type of fire. The carbon dioxide extinguisher consists of a high pressure cylinder containing compressed carbon dioxide gas. The gas is released by a wheel or squeeze grip lever valve. The flared nozzle spreads the carbon dioxide to remove the oxygen and the heat from the fire. Leaking tanks or spilled containers of flammable liquids are also effectively controlled with a carbon dioxide type extinguisher. Dry chemical refers to the bicarbonate base extinguishing powders that are used primarily to extinguish B and C fires. The widely used multipurpose dry chemical refers to the ammonia phosphate base extinguishing powders that have been found suitable for use in A, B or C fires. To obtain maximum efficiency in the use of any extinguisher, the manufacturer's operating instructions must be followed. Most extinguishers are also available in large capacities. These types should be included, where necessary, in the fire protection plan. Companies have perfected portable track-mounted water tanks that can be transported to any section of the mine in case of fire. Water pumps generate pressure, forcing water onto the fire area. This equipment can also be used for remote, off-track firefighting. Some mines use a sprinkler or automatic carbon dioxide system as part of their underground fire protection plan. 
Water lines should have valve connections located at strategic areas. In an emergency, compressed air lines can be converted to water lines by using a bypass connection. Effective use of firefighting equipment depends upon effective communications, coordination, and planning. When a fire occurs, men should be warned immediately. Reliable communication systems are invaluable and necessary to expedite mine evacuation and for organizing and directing firefighting. Stench warning systems are used in some mines to alert workmen of fire underground. This odorous chemical is similar to that which gas companies add to their gas lines. If a fire occurs, the stench is released throughout the mine, warning the men to evacuate. Also, another effective warning system utilizes flashing lights to warn the men. Clearly marked escape routes can prevent confusion and entrapment. An up-to-date map should be available, showing the ventilation system, escape ways, telephones, location of firefighting equipment, and first aid cabinets. A well-equipped mine rescue station, under the supervision of a qualified instructor, is an important part of a fire protection plan. Self-rescuers should be readily available for underground workers who should be trained to use them correctly. Good housekeeping is the first line of defense in any fire protection plan for it prevents the accumulation of combustible material. Strict compliance with safety rules and regulations, together with proper maintenance and regular inspections, also play an important part in preventing fires. When a fire cannot be extinguished by direct methods, the last resort is to seal it off. One procedure is by using a fire retardant, quick sealing compound called rigid foam. This material can also be used as a protective coating to prevent spalling of rock and can be easily punctured to obtain gas samples. Other materials made from asphalt and latex have also been developed and are suitable for sealing passageways and controlling ventilation. In cooperation with industry, the Bureau of Mines developed equipment that produces high expansion foam to help combat underground fires. Several types are available. However, the one most commonly used is a unit with a plastic tube attached to the discharge end. When the fan is turned on, the air pressure inflates and unrolls the tubing Foam is generated by forcing the air through a net in the exhaust end, which is being continuously soaked with detergent and water. The primary purpose of the foam is to transport water to distant fires. If the tubing is too long, the end will be burned off by the fire. The heat of the fire flashes the water to steam, resulting in an air-steam mixture with an oxygen content that will not support active burning of most flammable materials found underground. Here is a track-mounted, high-expansion foam-generating unit capable of forcing foam into a heading area. The efficiency of this unit can be increased by erecting temporary seals to cut off the oxygen supply from the fire area. Since the plastic tubing is flexible, it can also be directed to other levels of the mine when necessary. The foam envelops the fire and eventually extinguishes it by a quenching and smothering action. If the foam does not put the fire out, it will control it until firefighters can advance close enough to extinguish it with other equipment. 
Through proper advance planning, effective communications, and thorough understanding of firefighting equipment, fires can be eliminated. Everyone must cooperate in fire prevention. This presents a real challenge, both to management and to workmen.